Hey, this is Craig. We're at Goods and Guitars here in Odessa, Texas, and thanks for watching. All right, so last time we were here, uh, we uh, wrapped the neck to get uh, everything clamped up. So we're going to unwrap that and uh, get things uh, moving forward. The uh, client is actually coming by tonight to take a look at the progress so I would like for it to be able to tell him it is good to go we're ready to start finishing and uh, so we got to get a couple of things squared away on here uh, the main thing well uh, last time is you know I had some fretting issues and I got those squared away <clears throat> right now um, it's uh, just cleaning this thing up and getting uh, this fretboard, do some testing and get it stained. But right now we gotta get her cleaned up and work the uh, clean up these edges. So. Okay, so basically at this point, uh, we got to clean all this up right here and then work the uh, fretboard down to the neck. What I, I don't want to do is uh, alter it too much. Right now I'm using light pressure. I'm getting a, a lot of comments on some videos that I've done about prying on things and, you know, uh, the thing you guys got to understand, and I'm sure some of you do, is, you know, you can't, you can't tell on video how hard, um, how much pressure I'm using. It's like right now with this file, it is super light pressure. Um there's hardly anything uh, I'm not bearing down on it you know some people might be oh you're gonna break the headstock because I'm just I'm not pushing that hard uh, I think I just kicked the camera so now we've got a smooth transition between the fretboard and the uh, the neck what I need to do is uh, clean this up. There was a, a pretty nasty spot right here where the neck had been damaged. And we're going to fix that spot. And it's probably going to be... Uh, it's pretty shallow. It's just... We'll put some filler in it. And then once that's dry, then we'll do a final sand on it. Um, this is a uh, timber mate is what it's called. And it's the colors it's it's got different colors you can get it in ebony and natural this just happens to be cherry you have mahogany rosewood in this color in my opinion the cherry matches mahogany better than mahogany does uh so we're gonna put that right there let that dry and then right now we're gonna flip it over and get this other side cleaned up um,
in this file that I'm using, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a razor file is what they call it. And it's extremely sharp and it's, it's basically working like sandpaper with a light touch. Uh, and then you can, uh, you can really bear down with this thing and move some material, but that is not what I'm wanting to do. Um, this is a, a round so I can work this area right here. And then we got another spot right there that's almost directly across from the other side. Is when this guitar came to me, the, the fretboard wasn't on it. Uh, matter of fact, is the fretboard was in two or three pieces. And there were a big chunk of it missing at the sixth fret. And so I don't know what happened to the neck. But just this area right here it had a pretty deep gouge. So again, we're going to put a little bit of filler in here. And because uh, it's just very minor, minor deal. There's no structural issues with it. And then we're going to let that dry. And then we'll come back with some sandpaper and clean it up. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to get set up to do some testing on another piece of this uh, roasted maple to try to get some ideas for what we're going to do to mimic that. So let me get that set up and then we'll go for it. <clears throat> All right. So what I've got right here is a piece of the baked maple. It's one of the scraps that I did. Uh, being that it is maple, I'm going to need to put some sort of finish on it when I do the finish for the rest of the guitar. And so my thought process is I can use some aniline dyes and try to mimic some of this aging. So I went ahead and put a couple of frets in here. Uh, so right now what I'm going to do is I got a little bit of alcohol mixed up in here. And then I'm going to put some of this. If it hasn't dried up on me, this could be, there we go. There's a little bit in there. All right. So that is uh, tobacco brown. And then I've got some vintage amber. If I don't like that color. And the thing about these are they're transparent. <clears throat> you can mix them to the point that they're opaque, but it takes a ton. So these are transparent and now I have this, this tobacco brown color and I'm going to take this and I'm going to get a little bit on here. And then back here, I'm just going to darken it a little bit. And as I build up these layers, this is going to get darker and darker. Um, so let that dry a little bit. The thing about the alcohol is it flashes off pretty fast. Um, and we can build this up. And that's actually probably going to work pretty well. So um, it's kind of, I, I don't think I'm going to need to put any of the amber in there because the, the wood where it's worn kind of matches this color you know with one pass and then so we're just gonna go for it right now we're gonna take uh, and this this was only uh, sanded to like 60 grit through the thickness sander so um, but you can see that first pass is, is pretty dark. And if we let that dry, then we 
you can do another pass. But one of the things I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take a paintbrush and, and really darken it in some plate, you know, put a lot on there. Uh, and then, like it seems to be darker up towards the top. And I don't know if you can see how it's, then when I hit the frets, it's causing it to pull material and then it's leaching out from the fret. Uh, it seems to be really dark right in there. And so I can take this paintbrush and run it down the edge of these frets. darken those areas kind of blend it in a little bit I hope y'all can hear me I'm not wearing my mic right now <clears throat> and so I would let this dry naturally uh, but what I want to do is hit it with a heat gun to get it dry so if i go back and when i sand and kind of see what happens uh so let me get the heat gun over here and the good thing about it is i mean Gives it that look, and then if I got to sand a lot on there to clean something up, it just I think that's gonna do the trick. I have to darken some spots, lighten some spots, but the next thing I wanna see is if I take some 600 grit paper. What I'm gonna do is just wrap it around the tip of my finger and then Because when I polish these frets, some of this is going to come off. And I don't, uh, I mean, I could, I could tape it off, but I think that's going to, uh, take away from the effect I'm wanting. So I may not even take the fretboard off when I polish these. I think that's gonna do the trick game uh, like you know here right up there where the the nut is it's it's got a, a little dark spot and then it's still along the fret line seems to be a little darker but I don't want that hard edge Now, again, <clears throat> we go back and the, like I said, the frets are going to keep me from getting down right up against that edge, which is what I want.
So now, if we take a uh, little, this is, I'm gonna use satin when I, but this is gloss lacquer. You can see what it does. It, it just kinda accentuates it. So I think that's gonna be the way to go. So uh, that's going to be our next step is as soon as the next dry from the little spots of filler, then we're going to go ahead and do that. So y'all stand by. <clears throat> I've been thinking about it uh, while I was getting things ready and my thought process is like most things I do, I'm just going to go for it. So um, I'm going to just put one even coat all over and then go from there um really ain't much to say on this so if i don't say nothing play some music in the background i don't know what i'm gonna do Okay, so we got that dry. Now we're gonna go back and uh, do some sanding. And I've decided that what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of 600 on my foam block. <clears throat> and then kind of work my way around where they were playing. Get this up here so I can... There's a, kind of some light spots right up here. Maybe barred cords. And then all through here. Oops.
Now we're going to go back with the cloth and darken up in here again along the fret lines. got these uh, and I just thought of this so we're gonna give this a shot and see what happens I've got these erasers they're fret erasers but I bet they'll do it because what, cause what I, I don't want to put the ridges in there you know from all the years of playing then the client doesn't want those in there so what but I want to mimic it and so I think If I just try to follow the string line. It's mainly just right up here in the first position. I think we're uh, getting somewhere with that. I'm, I'm looking at it through the camera to kind of see what it is y'all are seeing. Um, so again, like I said, being transparent, everything works in layers. So you can always go back and I can darken it a little in some spots. And it, it's always, you know, it's, it's like working with watercolor, you know, being an art teacher, you kind of pick things up over the years and I use a lot of that in my guitar work, knowing how things are gonna react and, and that's basically what aniline dyes are is a form of watercolor. But I really like the way that looks. And then we'll put this up here and you know, if we knock all the dust off of this one. But I think that will do the trick. So what we need to do now is uh, get this thing on the body and see what we need to do right down here to get the arch in it if we need one so i'm gonna move the camera y'all sit tight all right well it's on there and i really don't think we're gonna need to do anything to it uh we're just gonna leave it like it is straight across it looks fine uh the other one was straight so we will do the same treatment uh for the bridge when we get to that point i think this is going to be a short video because really the only thing I, I need to do at this point is uh give everything one final sand down make sure everything's good and then do the stain so 
I guess on the next video, that's when we'll do all of the finished stuff and uh, I need to deal with the bridge. I'll show you how I do that. But at this point, uh, I can't really do that until I got, I got to lock everything down into a jig because, you know, I can't put any tension on the neck because it'll come right out. Um, so I'll have to clamp the, the neck in and that way it can't move. And that way I can string it and, and get the intonation right. But that's what we're going to do on the next video. I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, if you haven't gone and checked out my pedal steel page, uh, go do that. I'm trying to get another video worked up for it, but you know, I got a million and one things going. So, uh, I appreciate y'all's patience with me. Thanks for watching again, like, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next video.